Hi everyone, today we are with Chris Kruger and Rihanna Lawala and uh, Chris is in Vancouver, Canada and Rihan is in Karachi, Pakistan and over to you Chris. Hey, what's up internet? It's Chris Krug and I'm checking in here from my studio in East Van and I'd like for you to introduce yourself there Rihan. Hi, Chris. Thank you for the opportunity. I am a humble human being who is trying to um, understand life and a teacher. I have been an entrepreneur most of my life. I have been in the business of computing since age of 13, and I have done over 150 projects or companies in my life in seven countries. And now I have retired 12 years ago, trying to end poverty from my country. And um, my latest venture is my school, which is designed based on the post AI and post internet era, post YouTube era, because none of the school in the world are, I have ever seen are, are taking the advantage of AI and internet. They're all like stuck in biology and chemistry and physics and cutting up the frog and all that kind of stuff. So I, I started this school where I wanted to take advantage of the young minds time, uh, because to be just, I don't even want to comment. I mean, they're doing what they can. So I, right now I run a school. I don't go there myself. I have a team of around 22 teachers with 40 kids and um, it's 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 an interesting experiment I'm doing uh, where it's in a slum area of Karachi where the kids families earn less than hundred dollars a month so we're, we started giving them computers and the internet and cell phone like six months ago and now they have started to learn English on their own. Everything is on their own. We only have facilitators. We, we don't teach them anything, literally. We just discipline them that you have to come on time, go on time, and all that kind of stuff. And um, there is no biology, chemistry, physics, math, science. It's all AI. It's all chat GPT for them to learn whatever they want to learn. We also give them a problem to solve. So one of the problems they have to solve is one, their own poverty, which is they have to learn at least $500 a month. And second, uh, sorry, I muted you out. Just Do you want just one second, my friend, there's no need yeah. for you to tell the whole story in one big oh, second. Sorry. We can we can have a bit of a conversation here. So thank so, you very much for introducing yourself. I uh, I just met you today, but I decided that we needed to get on to the, the video chat here and record a conversation. Um, I met one of your students yesterday. They they tracked me down somehow on the Internet and they asked me to do an interview for their for their class, for your class, uh, for their podcast. And so that was Alien. And, uh, and I did that podcast with him this morning and it was in the process of getting to know him and talking to him a little bit. I learned about you and about the school and became intrigued. And that started a conversation between you and I. Thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, do tell us a little bit more about the students and where they come from and your, um, and your vision for this. So as I said, they, the school is in a slum area. Their families earn less than $100 a month combined income. Um, and it's kind of hard to live in that kind of money. So we teach them basic technologies, freelancing and stuff. And then we also, the reason I made the school was actually to solve problems using their time. Uh, if you want to become a swimmer, you start at seven. If you want to become a baseball person, you start at nine. You you start early. So why not why not start become a Malala? Why not become a Greta Thunberg at the age of ten? Right. So we give them one problem, one that it could be water, solar, energy, gutter, streets, whatever, and then there that's what they do for the next six years. So they have to solve uh, the water problem. How did they solve a water problem? So they watch one TED talk every single day on water, and then they make their own TED talk. What whatever their understanding is from that TED talk, 
into a video and then they post it on their YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram. And second, they tag the original TED Talk speaker and then they request them for an interview. Yeah. The original TED Talk speaker. So they are supposed to do this for six years. So the rest of their academics. So they know everything there is to know about water, the problems, the solutions, the inspirations, the network, the funding and everything. Yeah. Second thing they have to do is they have to interview one person a day, every single day of their school day. Third thing they have to do, they have to make a um, video on their subject every single day using AI. So they have to write the content using AI. They have to create the script using AI. They have to use AI to make voice. They have to use Canva or CapCut to make the video, edit it up, and then post it on the internet. And then um, Very that's advanced. it. That's it. So that's all they have to do as a school day. And um, right now is the first year, so we haven't been able to get to their. Uh, and it's a free school, and they have to pay us when they reach the five hundred dollar mark. So we charge twenty five percent of their income as our fees. And the reason I think it's interesting is because when we are able to do this and achieve, there are around twenty four million school just children in Pakistan who don't go to any school. So this will give. Uh, the private schools a interesting and amazing business model for them to copy and then they can kind of do the same thing for 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 other children so that's kind of what i do very interesting um you were kind of critiquing education in general at the beginning of this conversation by saying there's not a lot of schools that are kind of working with ai and stuff and and i've thought about this quite a bit because like i don't really envy the position that a lot of academic institutions and teachers and stuff are in. I mean, this stuff's changing every day so quickly. It's like, how do you, without starting a whole new university or a school like you're doing and reinventing education from the ground up, including the business model and the finance, it's like, how do you even, you know, educate students these days? All, the way we learn, how I process information, even my own concept of my creativity and my intellect and what's possible has changed significantly in the last three months. I agree. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I think that uh, you're you're onto something and I don't envy the other schools and it's almost hard to critique them. I mean, one thing that's easy to critique is, uh, you know, schools and professors that are using AI only to uh, determine if their students' papers are, are written by other AIs or something like this. This is just such a, a surface level. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so how many students you have, um, in the program right now? 39. Excellent. And they're all, uh, in the same, uh, uh demographics as Alien, who I met earlier. Um, age wise or how? Yeah, exactly. Same neighborhood. Like you were saying, same age, you know? Yeah. They're on, all in the same neighborhood. Um, same age, similar ages, not exactly the same. Yeah. Similar ages. Yeah. I, uh, I use some new AI tools that I've been experimenting with to, to make a video for your class, uh, an introduction to myself in Urdu. Did you, did you happen to see that? I did. It's pretty awesome. I, if I, I would love your permission to post it on my wall and get like thousands of people wanting to follow you just by watching that. Oh man, I would love it if you posted that to your wall and I'll even post a follow up uh, there as well to this conversation mentioning you by name and stuff. So we'll, uh, we'll really, uh, we'll open that up, you know, maybe, maybe I'll even experiment with how to translate this conversation as well. Sure. I don't That'll see why awesome. it's not possible. Like we can do the, the voice cloning and the translation and I think we can do the video part. So that'd be a fun little experiment. That would be great. What do you use for uh, voice cloning are you using 11 labs or something else yeah i'm using 11 labs and i've been experimenting with the the overdub function in descript as well and uh i'm on the beta list for the adobe new podcasting suite that's coming out but i haven't gotten to mess under the hood too much other than the they have like a magic you know audio filter that essentially 
uh, uses AI to detect not just background noise, but um, other artifacts and stuff. And it's amazing. You can like record in your iPhone in a windstorm and it uh, makes it sound like studio sound in the end. It's very incredible. Yeah, we have been playing with the filter and all, but if the studio comes out, I'm sure that it has more amazing you know, gadgets and tools to play with. That'll be cool. Yeah. Um, what's life like in Pakistan these days? Um, Pakistan is um, is an amazing country. It's uh, 250 million people, so it's like you know seven times the size of your population. But the um, the size wise, it's not really that big. Uh, majority of the people are um, uneducated. Majority of the people earn a lot, very little money, uh, less than less than three dollars a day. Uh, but we do have an amazing internet service everywhere. We have amazing smartphones, really cheap, 40 bucks for a smartphone, $4 a month for unlimited bandwidth, unlimited phone, unlimited text. Wow. Uh, really cheap housing. Uh, you can buy a, we can rent an amazing house. One of the teachers which moved in from uh, Washington, D.C., moved into Karachi to be at our school. She has rented her own four-bedroom house with furniture for $130 a month. Um, so it's really low. Food is really low. You can get a Big Mac with meal, like $1.80 uh, from McDonald's. Uh, so it's the price wise is really low. If you actually earn in the US and spend in Pakistan, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it's really the country, people are very hungry for for making more money um, and internet opens up the door, but there's, they don't know how to do it. They don't know how to communicate. They don't know how to network. They're all into skills, skills, skills. And they don't understand that no matter what you learn, you will end up not really using it in six months time or a year's time. Right. Right. And, and teach them how to learn instead of just like software applications or something like this. Correct. And, and I teach them my, so, I've been doing a lot of self-analysis and I have these courses I've made um, um, on the internet and I don't charge anything, but um, I'm going to be focusing more now on the networking, teaching and yeah. self-confidence, self-belief part. And um, that's kind of my forte now. And I think if you build the right network, um, the money comes and finds you once you build the trust once you once you really like the people you're working with you find a way you can learn you can learn a new software in a day or a week or a month but you can't yeah. make make a lifelong relationship it takes a lifelong time that's right i mean in the time you invest in those things those relationships in the network they do continue to pay off over time i uh I spent the pandemic living rurally on an island close to here and essentially had no communication professionally with my network or, you know, my clients, just everything had just dried up completely. And so in the last little while, like the last two months, I just moved back to Vancouver and uh, I've been putting myself back out there, reconnecting with uh, old colleagues and stuff. And it's just amazing how much like potential energy is still contained within that that network. You know, it's like. People are very happy to see me back. They remember, you know, the, the things that we did together and, and what it what it's like, what it feels like to work together. And it's been um, it's been awesome. It's been a really warm reception. And uh, and so, like, I, I can't thank those people enough. And I think you're really barking up the right tree to uh, teach people these kind of like soft skills, English, trust, uh, self-confidence, the networking. Yeah, so so our curriculum for the sixth grader is to make 200 or 300 faceless videos using, so that basically teaches them how to use AI, how to use ChatGPT, how to use Canva, how to use the internet. They, they've never experienced it. So basically, I'm just trying to get them friendly with their computers, with, their, with the internet. They're so scared of it, and their parents are scared of it. So that's what are they one. scared of? They think the internet is evil. Uh, my principal, I introduce him for one year. He would just cut off the internet every time I would put it in, and every time we would try to physically cut it, physically cut it off. 
he would just not let us use the internet at school. I wasn't, I don't go physically there. So he would just think it's evil. He would never use phone. He would never use Facebook. It's like evil. Um, it's just, you know, you're not, you're just, you're always scared of stuff that you don't know about. Yeah. Um, so you have lived in Uganda, but you know, somebody who has not, he would be like, why are you going there? And it's all kind of weird people over there. So, you know, it's just like that. And so it took me a year and a half just to get the school on board to my vision. Right. Uh, and then slowly, um, some of the people who, who knew me, they started migrating to our city. Uh, just to be in our school, uh, four families migrated um, to admit their children in our school. And those are the pillars of my school right now because their parents were on board. Uh -huh. And so then I hired some of the parents to come and stay at the school as a facilitator, teach them, teach the children. Um, it's, it's an interesting process. And I think that I'm happy that I did it in a slum or like a poor area because they don't argue as much. Once they trust you, they, it's like easier. Um, so let's see. Um, it's uh, basically, as I was saying about the curriculum, is to interview 300 people a year. And then they have, I mean, their conversation becomes phenomenal. Their listening skills become better. Um, their speaking skills become better. Alian has done 170 so far, uh, 100 or so in English. Uh, and their English is improved. In four months, they started speaking English. And I was I was watching you interviewing him, and he, he was kind of scared to speak because basically they used ChatGPT to come up with questions. You were you were enjoying the questions because they, he didn't come up with them. Clearly. He, yeah so but he he takes your bio and he plugs it into chat gpt and it comes up with amazing questions and they're just nodding and they're just listening and they're like but they're listening and it's going yeah. in that's how we learned our mother tongue so now they're in listening english after 50 or so interviews they started doing this in turkish and swedish in other languages using chat gpt i was like what's going on it's really uh, interesting. I was talking to my friend in Japan last night and he was talking about how I did one of these videos for him in Japanese. And he said my my vocabulary was really interesting and Japanese people were going to find it really interesting because most of the white people there that speak Japanese are former Mormons and they all learned out of the same how to learn English book or whatever. And so everybody talks the same who speaks Japanese, who's white and speaks Japanese. And I was when I was talking to your student this morning, you know, I was I was thinking like, I use so much idioms and colloquial talk and even the questions that he had pulled from my bio, like they're not like, even people that speak English don't know what some of those things are that he was asking me about, you know? And so like, it was just they're fascinating questions. And uh, I, I was clear that the GPT wrote them, but I was, uh, I was happy to talk about some of that stuff anyway. It's very interesting. Yeah, I encourage you to do a few more. Uh, these kids are very smart. They have, they're becoming extraordinary kids. I, I as I said, the, so the, the way they were, they do Turkish and other language interviews is they don't, they don't use AI to, to, to do the voice like you did. They actually read uh, the other languages in Roman text, and then they're just, they're just pronouncing it. They're just practicing pronunciation. And the, the other guy is just speaking their own language and they're just nodding, oh yes, oh yes, oh yes. Mm -hmm. And and then they end up learning a little bit of it. And I would like, I would, I think in future I would experiment for them to go out and uh, do in other languages also, like do hundred of them yeah. and see how much language do they pick up just by doing hundred interviews. But it's kind of hard to find the guest because um, not everybody gets it that why is a 12 year old child messaging me for an interview? Where is he? Where is he coming? Is this some kind of a scam? Is sure. something new? Yeah. So it's just well, kind of why the soft skills part, the, the language and the confidence and the networking is so important because, uh, you know, me and your student had to work through that as well. Like we had to figure out who he was and like, can I trust you and what's going on here, you know, and stuff. And, uh, I'm pretty open. But I felt like that's definitely one of the obstacles that that you have to overcome and that like, you know, I'm going to be doing some mentoring with you. So I'll, I'll use the we that we have to overcome is like, how do we help these students like uh, 
mm, cut through that initial skepticism that doesn't really have anything to do with them in particular, but has to come as like stigma against the developing world, against Islam, against Pakistan, like all these things like start to come into people's minds, you know, and uh, and so it's it's a lot to deal with when you're a, a 13 year old kid just want to do an interview with someone in Canada on the Internet, you know. So I have opened up my network to them. Uh, initially, they were just talking to my friends, so they trust me. I have been, uh, you know, I, I have a lot of people on Facebook, around 14 million. So I have a lot of friends among them. I've met them, so they trust me. So they were ready to just do it. Uh, we try, I've been trying to do it for a year, but their English was not good enough for doing it. So we tried multiple times, multiple times, and I lost a lot of soldiers, I would say, friends who, I, I can't talk to this kid. I, he's not really understanding what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. But but in the last one month, they have been hunting themselves, and that's been really cool. And then they have been requesting their guests to refer them to someone else, and that's been interesting. There's a gentleman in... Los Angeles, who has been opening up his roller decks for them, and he has been connecting them, and they're getting all kind of amazing speakers. And the one of the guys, it's just, I think it's just going to take time, but it's happening. It's, it's really already cool. happening. You said it's only six months old. The whole, I, I, I gave everybody a laptop in March. That's yeah. not even six months. Yeah, it's not even six months. Um, so I give just everyone a laptop. I said, you know what? Here you go. Here's one. Go break it. And I found out today that 10 of them were broken and we had to change them all again. Yeah. So I'm going to keep on doing it. I'm not going to, you know, worry about it. Just, you know, it's, it's, it's worth the experiment. It's part of the, you know, process. I really think you're onto something. Um, I was telling your student about this guy I met last night called Abdul and he won a pitching contest that I was at and, uh, um, you know, he runs these three online coursework, you know, masterclass type things that he sells online and he made 50 million bucks last year selling signups and tickets and registrations for these courses. And he's from Pakistan. And, um, you know, I think he'd be a really interesting guy for, for you all to talk to. And, um, you know, I definitely think there's a lot of opportunities there. Yeah, I sent him a message on LinkedIn. I sent you his link also uh, for a podcast. Um, I don't think it aligns with my school work right now, but um, I think it, I will be happy to introduce him to my network and then he can actually go and sell his stuff to other coaches in, in our country and other parts of the world in my network. So I, you know, I, I would... actually, when I, when I, um, when I was thinking of it, uh, I thought of it for a couple of reasons. One is that, um, you know, as he's not, I don't think he's looking to sell into your network, but the, the one reason I thought about it was like, he's an inspirational guy. I mean, he gives people an idea of, you know, what's, what's possible or whatever, but then, um, he's looking to like, take his much like you, much like you who's willing to do a bunch of stuff for free for six years and then take 25% of the students like income after that or something, or 25% after 500 a month or whatever it is. Um, he's looking to invest 200 grand in 10 content creators uh he's calling them like ceos or whatever of their own little uh educational course building thing and um and then he's going to apply his model you know his all of his like you know sales funnel bullshit and his uh you know coaching stuff and um so i don't know it's just kind of interesting it's an interesting opportunity for a bunch of young people who have uh these skills to you know talk to this guy maybe be like be their own ceo sure it'll be awesome if that can happen yeah yeah he was a really he was a really interesting guy so uh what else do you want the world to know um nothing much um if the world your world is interested in having conversations with young minds and just having a conversation for the having for the sake of having a conversation without any monetary returns on either side i just encourage building the connection just meeting a random stranger out of the blue and having the talk and you never know what comes out of it you know it's not a it's not a speed dating it's a 30 minute date it's you just spend at least 30 minutes on that and that gives them confidence that i can have friends in canada i can have friends everywhere i can just talk with them they're like me they have two ears and two eyes and one nose you know i'm just like them and that 
took me a while to learn. It took me, I was extremely un, under confident human being. And um, I had to spend, you know, rewrite myself many, many times to be able to speak with you. And I think if I can do it, they can do it too. So it shouldn't be a problem. Um, and that's right now, that's all we're seeking. We're not seeking any financial help or anything like that. We're just looking for some friends and okay. who can just chit chat with these kids and just make them feel just a kid. And if they can, if I could partner with some school uh, back in Canada or wherever to, to do this with the kid, because that, you know, then it's a kid to kid relationship. It's just yeah. fast. Um, so I think that they will they will look they will be able to learn much faster. And the reason they're not able to earn right now is their belief system and nothing else. It's mm -hmm. a, they're they really technically amazing, but they don't have the place to sell. They don't have the beliefs to sell. And I think it's a it's it's just going to take some time. And then all of a sudden they will look at there just like your Abdullah who guy did it. So anybody else can do it. Too. Yeah. It's not going to be long before your students realize the skills they already have that you've already given them, uh, are at least as good as the ones that are, people are selling out there on these marketplaces. I mean, um, they're, they're, they're doing really good, man. They're pretty far ahead versus lots of people I hire on Upwork and Fiverr and stuff like that. Yeah. I think so too. So it's 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 going to pay off soon. Six months, year, maybe maximum. It's just uh, it's just dealing issues we're dealing with right now. It will be over. Well, I look forward to staying in touch with you. But let's do another one of these in a year, and okay. let's celebrate some of the successes. Sure. Maybe we'll go to Nanaimo and do it over there. Oh man. I uh, I just came from Vancouver Island. That was where I hung out during the pandemic. So. Uh, it's it's cool to hear the words Nanaimo roll off your lips. <laughs> yeah, I I had an um, I had a wonderful friend back in 1996 who I connected with online, and then he was one of the first person on the planet to offer a web-based email service. Actually, believe it or not, out of Nanaimo, <laughs> and um, he was way before Hotmail and Yahoo and all those stuff. And I was selling his services. Um, everywhere and in Pakistan for an arm and a leg back in the day. It was 97, 98. And then I went to see him in 99 or 2000. I came and I went to see him, spend a day or two with him. Uh, it's a really beautiful place. I have not been there again. Um, but yeah, I, I would love to go there again. It's a really nice place, I think. Cool. Hey, I really, really appreciate your time. You're doing great work. Thanks for sharing with me. Be nice to be in touch. Thank you for giving time to our students. Yeah, man, my pleasure. Okay, over and out from Canada. All right. How do you do those effects? Those I so have cool. no idea. It only does it at the end when I, I have no idea. <laughs> Maybe and it's like the phone and something. It, it, Maybe I use it. On the back? I wish I tried. Hello, hello, where are you? Uh, 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 Alien tried the same thing, and I was surprised when it happened there, too. I have no idea where it's coming from because it happens in Zoom and other places, too. So, all right. All right. Would you, um, I'll send you my email so you can give me that file and I'll, I'll get it on my. I really appreciate it, man. You're so cool to meet you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Same here. Take care. All right. Right. Yeah, you got to be going